Yeah, we can see your screen. Over to you, Sarana. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to the uh, third session of my talks. Uh, in the last two sessions, we um, tried to understand something about the basic uh, concepts of matroids. And then we uh, chose a geometric point of view uh, to look at some um, associated polytopes called cycle polytopes. And as I promised before, today we are going to uh, be more algebraic and talk about some algebras and ideals that we associate to matroids. Uh, and they are also called cycle algebras and ideals. So uh, first of all, we fix a field, K. And before going to our uh, stuff, uh, I would like to give a more general definition of a polytopal algebra or a special uh, kind of toric algebra. Uh, we talked about lattice polytopes. So having any lattice polytope we can uh, inside R D with um, non-negative coordinates, of course. Uh, we can associate an algebra denoted by KP, which is defined to be a monomial algebra over K generated with some monomials which are um, in correspondence uh, with the lattice points of my polytope, namely Y to the power A and Z beside, such that this A belongs to P, the, uh, lattice points of my polytope, which is this. Okay, and this algebra is inside this polynomial ring, y1 to yd and z, and by this, uh, I mean a monomial, very likely you know that uh, we can um, write monomials in this short way, but more precisely, this is just y1 to the power a1, y2, a2, and so on, yd, ad, and z. <coughs> and this a is, as you see, it is in z uh, to the power d, so it is a1 to a d. So we write this short form to denote our monomials of this type. And this exponent vector comes from the lattice points of the polytope. So always we can define such an algebra, which is indeed a toric algebra. I mean, a special type of algebras. If you do not know what a toric algebra is, don't worry. I don't want to use the properties that much. And uh, it is also a standard graded. Uh, generated in degree one. How degree one? This is induced by taking degree of z equal to one. So we put this z just to manage the um, uh, degrees actually. And degree of all yi's equal to zero. Then this algebra kp is generated in degree one. All the monomials generate, uh, generating monomials are of degree one. And then we have just some standard graded <coughs> algebra over k. So this is in general, always we can associate such an algebra to any lattice polytope. But now I want to focus on our objects and apply this structure on our own objects. So 
you remember that we are working with matroids. So we take any matroid that you like. You know from yesterday that we had a uh, polytope so, uh, card cycle polytope denoted by this notation. So this is a lattice polytope. So in the procedure that I mentioned already above, uh, we can associate this algebra, the toric algebra associated to uh, cycle polytope of N. Just uh, to simplify the notation, I just write K psych M from now on. But more precisely, let us look at this algebra. This K psych M is now generated with some monomials. So my polytope was uh, associated to matroid. And the bridge in between were cycles. Cycles of my matroid were the disjoint union of circuits. So I should uh, consider the characteristic vectors of those cycles, then their convex hull would be the uh, polytope that I'm considering. So now these lattice polytope, uh, lattice points are just um, associated to cycles, the characteristic vectors. So y to the power c and z as we agreed above, where c comes from a cycle of a matroid because they just um, determined my polytope, the lattice points of my polytope. And this is, inside this polynomial ring, <coughs> sorry, y, e, and z, such that e is inside the ground set of my uh, matroid. Okay. And just to be more precise, let me write again this uh, y, c. It was just the multiplication of some variables. Which one? Those which uh, belong to C, which is the cycle of uh, my matrix. Okay, so this is the K algebra that we are considering. We introduced it above in a more general setting and here for my matroids. But uh, since I'm saying that this is a toric algebra for those who are a little bit familiar with this concept, now we can represent this algebra by a homomorphism, let us call it phi m, from a polynomial ring Sm. M, I put m because I just want to um, uh, remind you that you are working with a matroid m. This polynomial ring is over k again, and its indeterminates are in correspondence with cycles of my matroid. So phi m is from this polynomial ring to my algebra, my cycle algebra. So how does it work? Very natural. It sends a variable associated to a cycle like C to the corresponding monomial uh, in the right hand side, namely y c z. And okay, uh, we take these variables to be in degree one, as usual, standard rating. And as I discussed before, we took also this, these monomials of degree one. So this map phi m is a homogeneous homomorphism and if we look at its kernel then it would be again homogeneous ideal so 
kernel of Vm is homogeneous or graded. And it, if we look at uh, the way that we defined this uh, map, it is clear that this is surjective for any generators of my uh, K algebra in the right hand side, we find something in the polynomial ring SM, which goes uh, to uh, that generator. So this is uh, for sure surjective. And if I take this kernel, then you know from your uh, elementary algebra courses that SM over this kernel is isomorphic to my cycle <coughs> algebra. Okay. And now I want to give a name to this ideal, this kernel of phi m. This is indeed uh, called the defining ideal of this algebra. Since this is a toric algebra, we need a defining ideal of k psych m. And we call it the cycle ideal of Metroid M. Okay. So now I have cycle algebra and cycle ideal. So, so far I associated um, the algebraic uh, objects that I wanted to my matroid. So just to repeat that isomorphism, we have SM over I psych M. This is the notation that I would like to use for my cycle idea, which is exactly the kernel above. This is isomorphic to my K, K algebra. Okay, and this ideal, this cycle ideal, which is called also a toric ideal, since it is a defining ideal of a toric algebra, it is a prime ideal. All the toric ideals are prime. It is a graded or homogeneous ideal. We just mentioned above, this was just a kernel. And uh, what else? Um, it is also generated by some special uh, types of polynomials, which are interesting enough in the literature. So generated by the so-called pure homogeneous binomials. So by pure homogeneous binomials, we mean binomials of this type. So binomial is uh, just uh, the subtraction of two um, monomials, maybe with some um, scalar multiplication. But when we say pure, there is nothing, just two monomials like this. And I look at here, my kernel, my cycle ideal lies in this polynomial ring. So it should be written in terms of these uh, variables xc, where c is a cycle. So just a typical generator would be xci, i from one to some d minus multiplication of x, let's say di, i from one to d again, because I, I'm saying homogeneous here. So it is clear the subtraction of two monomials. So I see binomial and I said pure means that there is nothing, no alpha, for example, here or beta here. So this is also binomial, but when we say pure, we 
do not have something like this here. So this is a typical <clears throat> generator of such uh, ideal. And we have this information, it is good. Uh, we have something in hand to work with these ideas, but this is um, very little. So we would like to understand this ideal and this algebra a little bit more. Okay. And just don't forget that this um, CI and DI were just cycles of my matrix. Okay, I think now is the time to look at an example. As a first example, I would like to look at a familiar example that we saw yesterday, this small graph um, P3, the path over three vertices with uh, edge, edges labeled by one and two. If you remember from yesterday, we um, investigated its cycles. So the cycles were just, okay, we always put empty set inside. Okay, um, um, since we saw the example yesterday, I didn't write, but maybe it's better to write that my M here is the co-graphic matroid. Hmm? And in co-graphic matroid, again, if you remember, we said that uh, the, uh, circuit, the circuits are just minimal edge cuts. So it means that uh, one was one of them, two was the other one. And since I'm talking about cycles, I can take this joint union. So we had also one, two. We saw this example precisely yesterday. So this is the set of cycles. And now I want to associate my algebra, K psych M. So over K generated by these monomials. So I put Z here because I'm associating to this <coughs> empty set because I should put y to the power c the cycle and since i have just the characteristic vector of empty set is just zero 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 so i do not put y. and then okay for one again z i have here but which monomial i should write i have just a uh, one uh, element from the ground set. So I put y1 to z, uh, y1 z, and for two, y2 z. And finally, for one, two, I have the monomial y1, y2 z. And this is inside this polynomial ring, y1, y2, and z. So this is my K algebra, and as you see, I just use this correspondence. Hmm. So I have the cycle algebra in this way from the definition. And if we want to look at the map that I uh, introduced above, it was phi m from sm. Okay, the indeterminates of sm were coming from the cycles of the polytope. Uh, of the uh, matroid. So here I have K. Okay, you see cycles here. So what I put here, I put X empty, X1, X2, X12. I just uh, write the same names just to have a better feeling maybe. Okay, to my algebra. I write my algebra again precisely here, z, y1, z, y2, z, y1, y2, z. And we saw that this map works in this way. It sends the indeterminate uh, attached to one cycle to the corresponding monomial. So x empty comes from empty cycle. So it is sent to z, x1 to y1 z, x2 to y2 z. 
And finally, x1, 2, 2, y1, y2, z. So this is also uh, the homomorphism phi m. And for the cycle ideal, we need to compute the kernel of this map. For the moment, let us see if we see a candidate of um, an element of the kernel. So if we look at x empty, x one, two, minus x one, x two. This element is inside SM and by phi M goes to what? Okay, X empty goes to Z, X one two goes to Y one, Y two Z minus X one goes to Y one Z, X two goes to Y two Z. So they are equal, right? y1, y2, z squared are both. So this is zero. So for the moment, at least we have an element inside the kernel, but the kernel was just our cycle ideal of metroid M. Okay, you can work a little bit. It's not so difficult here to see what are exact, what is exactly the kernel. Uh, but it needs a little uh, bit work. But now at least I can tell you that you can see here that this cycle ideal is just generated by this element. So it is a principal ideal generated by this pure homogeneous binomial of degree two. Um, in general, computing such uh, kernels or cycle ideals uh, is not so easy. I mean, it's not easy. And um, for small examples, you can use computer. You can also give this example to Macaulay 2, for example, and it will compute for you the kernel. Um, but in some small as examples, we can also work a little bit with the grading and uh, the properties that we know. Uh, and we get some generators, but in general, it can be a tough job. But here you can believe me that this is the cycle ideal. And you can check it later. Okay, when we have this algebra and this ideal, we may ask about the height of this ideal or the cruel dimension of the algebra. Since this is a this is an easy ideal, a prime ideal, which is also principal. So you can easily understand that the height of this ideal is in this example, it's just one. And then you can also easily compute what is the uh, cruel dimension of the cycle polytope again in this example because this algebra was isomorphic to the quotient of sm over uh, the cycle ideal and for an ideal in any polynomial ring let's say k t1 to tr you know this height dimension formula that height of the ideal plus dimension of r mod i uh, gives you r, small r. So in this way, since our polynomial ring in the left-hand side has four variables, and I obtained the height of the ideal equal to one, then this dimension would be three. <coughs> okay. What is, well, uh, this was just in our example. What can we say in general? So here is a good news that we can say something in general because our algebras are coming from polytopes, lattice polytopes. And in general, if you know the dimension of the polytope, you can compute the cruel dimension of the associated algebra in the way that we associated. So it will be the dimension of the polytope plus one. 
Hmm? You can see it in um, several books that are uh, talking about toric uh, algebras uh, coming from polytopes. But if we look at our case, we know something about the, the dimension of the polytope. Last session we saw there was a formula that dimension of our uh, cycle polytope was the number of co-parallel classes of M. I don't want to repeat this word, this expression always. I just denote it by D of M from now on. So from what I claimed that is proved, then the dimension of the cycle algebra would be the M plus one. Okay, so we have this formula now. And hence, again, with this uh, familiar formula, we know that height of the cycle ideal would be, okay, again, let's go back to this map, SM. The number of variables are the cardinality of set of cycles. So we have cycles as many as the variables of SM. So now just applying this height dimension formula, I get the number of psych, uh, the cardinality of psych M or the number of cycles minus dm minus one. So we also have this formula for height. Okay. So we have these formulas in general, and uh, to understand better the ideal, the first question would be when this ideal is zero, when this kernel is just zero. Let's see when this happens. It is a very easy lemma that I'm just writing here. If we assume that M is a matroid, then the following are equivalent. One, what I said, this ideal is zero. And two, dm equals the number of cycles minus one. And for this purpose, we only need to look at this height formula because my ideal, my cycle ideal, as I mentioned before, is just a prime ideal. So since this is a prime ideal, Then we know that this is zero if and only if its height is zero. So it is an easy observation. So then with this observation, let's look back at the formula of height. I mean, being zero means that height should be zero. Height equal to zero means exactly this two. So as I said, this is a 
this is an easy lemma, but again, now we have, based on our formulas and uh, what we mentioned yesterday, we have a totally combinatorial uh, criterion for uh, vanishing of this ideal. Okay, but still, this dm, computing this dm, is not so easy in matroids. So we would like to try some um, cases that we can see this dm better from my matroid. Mm? So I want to make this more clear from the matroid. And for this, I would like to look at uh, matroids with a certain property that one of the par participants yesterday also asked if they play some role in the literature, if they are important at all. And I said, yes, maybe we um, today we can uh, talk about them. And that is the moment that I want to do this. So a matroid is said to be simple if it has no loops and no non trivial parallel classes. If you remember again from yesterday, trivial parallel classes were those um, which are just singletons. And we had an example with this uh, property and that's why one of the participants asked uh, this question, uh, this good question. Hmm? So simple means no loop, no non-trivial parallel class. It means that all parallel classes are just single tones. And if I say co-simple, it means that there is no co-loops. You know, when I put co before the word, it means that I'm looking at the dual metroid. And here, no non-trivial co-parallel classes. So now we have two new concepts, simple and co-simple. And right now, I want to repeat this lemma, the above lemma, to have a criterion for vanishing of this ideal but not for any matroid because I was uh, interesting in having this DM more readable from the matroid. So I repeat this lemma for co-simple matroids. So as a corollary, if M is a co-simple matroid, then the following are <coughs> equivalent. One, okay, the same as before, this ideal is just zero. But two, in the left-hand side, we have just the cardinality of the ground set. So it is much better than the number of co-parallel classes or uh, whatsoever we had above. So, this should be the cardinality of psych minus one. So let's see why. Because when I say co-simple, by definition above means there is no co-loop and no uh, non-trivial co-parallel classes. Okay. So it means that for any element of the matroid, this set 
is not a loop because we don't have any um, uh, a loop of a dual, I mean, uh, because of the definition of co-simpleness. Let me write a co-loop for you. And this gives us that any such set is a co-parallel class of M, and not only this, but also these are the only co-parallel classes of M because these are trivial ones. And by co-simple, we mean that there is no non-trivial. So, and they are the only co-parallel classes, okay? If you just uh, forgot the, these expressions, it doesn't matter, don't worry. You can later check what we said yesterday. Just uh, consider that under some conditions, we could uh, make the formula uh, a little bit better, more than a little, a little bit really. So, uh, and then, okay, how many co-parallel classes do I have now? For any element of E, I have one, and these are the only ones. So this means that the number of co-parallel classes, which we denoted above by dm, is just the number of elements of the ground set. Then if we look back at our lemma, okay, I'm just uh, re replacing this um, yellow part dm by cardinality of, D, of E, sorry. So, that's all. So for co-simple matroids, which um, are a big class of matroids and many interesting matroids are inside them, we can achieve for the moment that when the cycle ideal is just zero. Okay. Um, we saw this example of P3 yesterday. Maybe I'll just draw it again. And we worked with MG star. And if you remember there, the only co-parallel classes were just one and two. Yeah, And this was co-simple. That's, I mean, this was the moment that I was asked by one of you about uh, such a nice class of matroids, okay? So MG star is co-simple. So we are allowed to use this corollary for it. We computed the ideal above. It was a principal non-zero ideal. So one does not hold for uh m p star so two should not hold as well and we know that the cardinality of e for this metroid is just two but just a few minutes ago we recalled that the number of cycles were four minus one so this equality does not hold just to check our criteria okay uh, now that we are talking about vanishing of this ideal, it's uh, maybe um, interesting to say that in general, in the case of co-graphic matroids for any graph G, if you take the, let me write M, the cycle algebra and cycle ideal of this guy, is rarely zero. Indeed, this is the case if and only if your graph is just an edge or <coughs> a triangle. But this is just for the co-graphic metroid, which we um, 
obtained it in the first paper by uh, Tim Romer when we were working uh, with uh, cut polytopes and the base uh, object was holographic matroids. But in general, as you see, okay, this criteria should be uh, checked for uh, several classes. And now I want to give you another example, not graphic or co-graphic. And this example is, again, one of the very famous examples in Metroid theory, Phonometroid and its dual. So as denoted by F7 and dual, of course, F7 star. <coughs> I need always a, a ground set. And the ground set here is one, two, seven. And the basis of F7 itself are all the three subsets of these uh, seven elements, except some that I will tell you. So all three subsets of E, except if I just can show you here in a moment. Okay. Except those are three subsets that you see in this picture on the lines, different lines you see here, six lines and one curve, the circle in between, except what you see in the picture. By picture, I mean one, six, two. This is not a basis. One, five, three, two, four, three, one, seven, four, four, six, five. So you see four lines and one curve inside. These three subsets are excluded, but the rest are basis of uh, my final matroid. And Considering this basis, and uh, for sure you get all the independences because all subsets of these three subsets are independent. So it's easy to obtain also the circuits, minimal dependent sets. You can easily observe that the three uh, subsets. Circle, uh, sorry, by circle you mean five sixes uh, are connected and six four and four five are connected too? Uh, by the cycle, uh, you mean uh, in the By figure? By the cycle inside, yeah. Yeah, four, five, six. The one around. Yeah, okay. The three so elements the around the cycle, yeah. And on the line, I mean one, five, three, for example. The things that they are uh, just uh, located on that line or curve, okay? So, the ones shown in the picture are not independent sets because we just excluded them. So they are dependent sets and you can see that they are minimal ones. So they are inside my um, circuit set. I denote these uh, six, uh, seven, um, three subsets of the figure C1, C2, two, C7, no matter how you just name them, just I want uh, them to have a name. So CI, the ones in the picture, and their complements. So I have a ground set E. I have a basis uh, a B, which was uh, cons uh, consisting of all subs uh, three subsets of E, except the seven or three subsets shown in the picture. 
So you can easily check, but you need to check really, that the circuits are these are three element subsets of the picture together with their complements, E minus each of them. So they are circuits. Having circuits, for sure, you can also compute cycles and everything else. But for the moment, that's enough for me. <coughs> Just I want to verify two things. That here inside this set, you don't see any loop loops where circuits of cardinality one. What you see here are car of cardinality three and their complements are of cardinality four. So no loops for sure. And no non-trivial parallel classes. Because if you want to have a non-trivial parallel class, by definition of yesterday, you need at least two parallel elements, two elements which together provide a circuit. But here circuits are, are of cardinality more than two. So no non-trivial parallel class. But just a few minutes ago, we saw that these two properties give um, a name to my matroid. So this funnel matroid F7 is a simple matroid. When F7 is simple, it means that F7 star, it's dual, it's for sure, co-simple. <coughs> we were interested in co-simple ones because we could read uh, this formula in a better way. When we had co-simpleness, this was something much, much better to see, to compute. And then we could judge if our ideal is zero or not. So that's why I am working with something which is co-simple now, but a new matroid. I didn't want to work with the previous matroids that you know them very well, hopefully so far. So this F7 star is co-simple and the cardinality of its ground set, which is again E, is seven. By our formula, what I need to compute is the number of cycles. To see what are the cycles of this matroid, I need to see what are the circuits, and then I take this joint union. You can see that the circuits of this F7 star, so, but I mean, somehow I'm putting it as an exercise for you, but it is just some combinatorial games. You can see that they are just the complements of what you see in the picture. Some four elements subsets. They were also here. They also appeared there. They are, but here these are the only. Sorry. They are twenty-one. They are twenty-one in in total. Uh, no, here in a C of F7 star, they are just seven because you but, uh, have. Uh, uh, but uh, when you define the base of F7, so you excluded them among all the three subset of. Uh... Yes. BF7 has, uh, yeah. Three choose um, seven, seven, seven choose, choose three, three minus seven uh, elements minus their seven. Complement, and then 14 will be taken out. So it will be in total. No, 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 no. No, uh, B7 has a lot of elements. But when I go to C and circuits here, mm -hmm. I'm just taking as by CIs, I mean the ones that you see in the picture, not all three subsets that we considered in B7, BF7. Oh, we just okay, see okay. seven three element subsets in the picture and their complements. So 14 elements 14 inside, in total. Yeah. exactly here. 
And for the dual, which I put it as an exercise here, we have just seven elements because I, you can see that just complements remain here. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seven, yeah, LM, uh, seven sets of cardinality four. So this is not uh, difficult, but I just want to save the time. And cycles were disjointed of circuits. And always we put the empty set here. But then, since I have seven elements and this circuit set, all, I mean, it's all, all elements are of cardinality four. No pair of them could be disjoint for sure. So the only disjoint unions could be trivial disjoint unions just by one of these. So I just have the all uh, the uh, circuits themselves together with the empty set, and I cannot take any disjoint union uh, of them. So now the cardinality of this site F seven star is just seven here, one here, eight. So as a summary, now I have a cold simple matroid. Its ground set is has seven elements. The number of cycles is eight. And if I just go back to the formula, too much. Okay, here. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, and here, what you see says that in the left-hand side, we have seven in our example, and then the right-hand side, we have also seven. So two holds, consequently, one should hold, and with this criteria, we can deduce that the cycle ideal of F7 star is just zero. So we didn't compute the kernel itself, but together with what we had, we could obtain a criterion to uh, check whether this is zero or not. And the matroid is not trivial at all. If you want to work with that map and the algebra itself, it needs some work really. But our criterion can show that this ideal is zero. And as I mentioned before, in the special case of co-graphic matroids, the ideal is rarely zero in just two cases of the graph, just an edge and a triangle. But this example shows that in general for any matroid, even in the case of co-simple matroids, there are more interesting matroids, non-trivial matroids, uh, which give us um, zero ideal. Okay, so having uh, a complete list of them would be interesting if somebody can achieve or um, yeah, at least some um, this would be nice based on this criteria. Okay, and now that we understand about vanishing of the ideal a little bit, at least we have a criterion, we can ask about um, um, more things. I mean, what can we say about the generators? If it is not zero, what we can say about the generators, uh, about the degrees of them? Can we have some linear forms, homogeneous um, polynomials of degree one inside, uh, which are uh, the ones we are, which are generated in degree two, two and so on, okay? So still there are a lot of questions remained. And for this purpose, I would like to fix a notation, first of all. We denote the highest degree of a homogeneous generator in a minimal generating set of I psych M. 
So I have a matroid. I provide the cycle ideal. If it is non-zero, it has some generators. Since it is graded, it has a minimal homogeneous generating set. They have probably different degrees. We denote the highest degree appeared among them by mu of m. And studying this for a special class of uh, metroids, uh, namely co-graphic metroids, um, initi was initiated by Strumfels and Sullivan in one of the papers that they list some conjectures there. And there are also some conjectures regarding this invariant. And this was uh, a motivation of our study as well. If we have enough time uh, in the next section, uh, session, I will um, tell you more about it. But for the moment, I would like to um, say at least something about this invariant. We go a little bit further now, another lemma. Again, M is a matroid. Then, <laughs> first of all, as I said, I am interested to see if it is non-zero. I mean, do I get uh, some generators in degree one? So I would like to look at degree one homogeneous component of this guy, which I'm claiming here that it is zero. And consequently, if the ideal is non-zero, then we can deduce that mu is bigger than or equal to two. I mean, having one, if you prove one, and if the ideal is not zero, then it means that the uh, degree of the generators should be at least two. So, and the highest one should be at least two. But to observe the first one, what happens if I want to have a linear form inside? If you remember, we said that the generators of this ideal are pure homogeneous binomials. And now if I want to take a pure homogeneous binomial of degree one in SM, whose indeterminates came from um, cycles, we have some binomial like this. There's no uh, multiplication behind because I just want degree one, where C and D are cycles and distinct. If this is inside the ideal, we don't forget that our ideal was just kernel. It means that its image should be zero. But what is phi of this element? This is just phi m of xc minus phi m of xd. And if you remember, our map sends these two guys to uh, certain monomials. So here we, uh, what we get is multiplication of Y E where E comes from C, Z minus, and this is just zero. Minus multiply, multiplication of Y E E from D Z. And when this is zero, of course, Z uh, do, uh, do not have anything to do. And it means that the characteristic vectors of C and D are the same. And it means that C and D as sets are the same, but they were distinct because I wanted to have something non-zero in my kernel. So this is impossible to have linear forms inside the kernel. That's why this degree is zero. And I mentioned before that what, why this happens. And I think now um, I should stop because of the time, but later we uh, continue with this invariant mu m, maybe tomorrow. And uh, we even go a little bit further to see which kind of tools can help us to attack to understand better uh, this invariant and some other related invariants like Bell numbers and so on. Uh, yeah, I think then I would stop here now for today. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, are there any questions from the audience side? Uh, there's nothing in the chat box. Anyways, uh, uh, 
you clarify everything with the uh, uh, elaborating elaborative example so i think uh, everything is clear uh, and uh, seemingly uh, well arranged and interesting so there is a remark in the chat box so it yes, was very well organized thank you very much Sarah, and uh, sorry for the inconvenience due to the internet disconnectivity in the beginning no, of your lecture. no problem okay thank, thank you, you thank you very much uh, sarah it, it would be appropriate uh, uh, sarah it would be appropriate if you can uh, mention that reference for the participant if someone would like to read uh, the paper of shrimpfels and probably your paper with tim romer before coming to the next lecture for the participant beforehand yes uh, yeah um so first of all for uh, uh, knowing more about metroid i mean somebody also uh, wrote an email to me and i also mentioned this reference that for knowing about metroids better you can see the book of metroid theory by oxley which is an which is a really good reference for metroid theory and um, yeah, uh, about MUM, you, if you want to know the origin of such problems, you can uh, see the paper by uh, Schrumpfers and Sullivan. I think this is something like a uh, toric geometry of, I hope I'm right, toric geometry of I, I think I think I have somewhere open. Maybe that would be great if I have. Yeah. I can show then. You can see, right? Uh, we can't. Uh, you shared only the screen, I think. Uh, the oh, I should change. I should change the screen now. Okay, at yeah. least I myself can check the uh, name Toric Geometry of Cuts and Splits. Okay, I just write it down there. Of Cuts and Splits. So I was right so far. This is uh, one paper, somehow the uh, motivation of our works. And then I cheat again, let me see here. And there's two papers by Tim Romer and myself. One is, uh, and it is, uh, it has been published in European Journal of Combinatorics. It is uh, retracts and oh, what happens here? Retracts and algebraic properties of cut algebras. And maybe the last one, cycle algebras and polytopes of metroids. So these two are by Tim Romer and myself, the first one, uh, as I said, has been appeared in European Journal of Combinatorics. And the, the second one is uh, just um, online on archive. The first one you can also uh, see on archive. Yeah. And about cuts and splits, there are also those, um, some books, but I think uh, for, about what I'm talking about, they may suffice. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, all these papers are available on archive if someone would like to download so they can download from there. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank Sarah has the last much. lecture. Sorry, yeah, Sarah has the last lecture on Friday, I think now. Friday, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. On I, Friday. I, mean, I made a mistake. I said tomorrow. Yeah, Friday. Yeah, yeah right. it's Friday, final lecture. So we'll see you on Friday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you and see you everybody. Bye. Bye. Uh